Hi, I'm Tanya Amon, Genetic Service Director for Angus Genetics, Inc., and this is Performance Insights. Traditional EPDs have focused primarily on output traits, such as the growth traits or carcass traits. However, in today's environment of soaring feed costs, that can account for 65 to 75 percent of the expenses associated with raising cattle, feed efficiency is becoming very important. There are lots of ways to phenotypically evaluate feed efficiency. RFI, or residual feed intake, is a popular one these days, as is RADG, and also just the classic feed to gain ratio. However, when we want to evaluate an animal's genetics for feed efficiency, we need to have a good idea of their genetics for both feed intake and for growth, as well as for correlated traits associated with both intake and growth. AGI has chose to report these relationships and these traits as RADG, or residual average daily gain. I think it's easiest to understand the RADG EPD if we just walk through an example. So let's take two bulls, bull A, has an RADG EPD of plus 0.27, and bull B has an RADG EPD of zero. As with all EPDs, you take the difference between the two, and we can interpret that to mean that on average, we expect bull A's calves to gain 0.27 pounds more than bull B's through the post weaning phase while consuming the same amount of feed. So what does that mean in terms of dollars and cents? If we take that 0.27 average daily gain and multiply it by a 160 day feeding period, that means that bull A's calves should gain on average 43.2 pounds more than bull, bull B's. In dollars and cents, if fat cattle were going for $1.25, that would mean there's a $54 per head difference for bull A's progeny compared to bull B's. So if you are a producer who has your eye on feed costs and feed efficiency is important to you, especially through the post weaning phase, I think the RADG EPD could be an important component in your bull selection criteria. For the Angus Report, I'm Tanya Amon.